So getting into deep about these uh, antenna design part, start from the scratch. Uh, so we can, uh, as a first part, we can coin the topics as in this order. Uh, what is actually the uh, antennas part? And for especially it is a biomedical applications. So I can talk about the textile antennas. I hope that the antenna paper, all of you may be handled or you have come across the antenna papers. So I'm directly going into the antenna design part because the area is a huge millimeter wave antenna design. So we have to start from the antenna design. So from the scratch, we can start with the uh, micro, uh, micro strip uh, patch antennas actually. And the regarding the micro strip patch antenna design, next we have to go into the textile antenna design. So what are all the challenges in the textile antenna design that also we can discuss and how uh, the antenna can be analyzed when it is uh, embedded on the textile and we can discuss about how the measurements can be done for these type of antennas and what are all the applications that we can mention. So generally the microwave frequency is in the range of the one above one gigahertz. Actually, the millimeter wave ranges above 18 gigahertz to 110 gigahertz. I think most of the colleges may have the uh, measurement um, device uh, for the micro strip patch antenna in the range of below 14 gigahertz only. But millimeter wave starting from 18 gigahertz, starting itself, it is 18 gigahertz. Uh, even the 5G as a subband is 6 gigahertz. But the millimeter wave technology start from 18 to 110 gigahertz. We cannot directly jump on to the 18 gigahertz. So as a part of the antenna design, we have to start, start from the microwave frequency ranges. So we can say that the microwave frequency range is above 1 gigahertz. I think the base we have come across as why this is uh, coming under this very high frequency range. Generally, we will say about the antenna frequencies are very high are the communication we have entered into the high frequency communications we know that the low frequency communication cannot be possible uh, in the kilohertz and megahertz range main the problem is as uh, the cooper has said as uh, uh, the antenna size would be very large when we use the low frequency antennas for uh, communication right this is the basic right uh, the basic says that uh, we know that frequency f or we can say that lambda is equal to wavelength is equal to c divided by f right when the wavelength is small frequency will be higher right when the frequency is higher right the wavelength we can we, we can say that it is very small but for the low frequency what will happen is wavelength will be large generally the antenna uh, size depends on the wavelength we know that half wavelength antenna isn't it lambda by 2 antenna so the lambda by 2 antenna of the low frequency, the size would be very big. For example, audio frequencies like uh, 30 kilohertz to 3 um, or uh, 300 kilohertz, uh, that frequency, if it is transmitted without uh, modulation, what would happen is antenna size would be of uh, 75 meters, right? We just we can just calculate that C divided by F, and optimum size of the la antenna is lambda by 2. So if the frequency is low, wavelength is large, right? Uh, that is the main reason we are going for the very high uh, frequency. And also we can say that the dispersion, these uh, attenuation and all, the high frequency attenuation is very less, isn't it? So the reflection is also very less. So the problem is we have entered into the high frequency. Go on, we are reaching the very high frequency bands. So the main uh, point as a communication engineer, we can say that when the frequency is high, the wavelength is small. When the wavelength is small, antenna size is also small. That is why the mobile antennas are kept in the, inside the packet. And for example, why we cannot stop with these lower gigahertz, right? And the another reason for going for the very high frequency entering to the millimeter wave technologies is the frequency is not sufficient. The bandwidth is not sufficient. Day by day, number of consumers are increasing. We cannot accommodate all the consumers in that frequency band. Slowly, we have deviating from gigahertz range to the higher gigahertz range. 
bandwidth is high right all the attenuation problems are reduced the path loss problem is also reduced but the major problem you are talking about the 5g is the path loss when we increase the frequency range path loss is a main factor that is a big ocean now we are talking about uh, first is a microstrip patch antennas right uh, why i have said uh, the 5g and frequency is uh, the uh, topic that we have specifically taken is a millimeter wave right so the millimeter wave frequency is a very high frequency range from the scratch we have to talk about above 1 gigahertz when we are able to design the antenna for greater than 1 gigahertz slowly we can enter into the high frequency ranges as a first part we have to start from the microwave patch antennas because all the 5g antennas millimeter wave antennas is a combination of arrangement of number of microstrip patch antenna as an array right it is a two dimensional array so that is why we are starting from the patch antennas right so the patch antenna is nothing but a metal patch on the top of the grounded dielectric substrate it may be of any shape the conventional or the rectangular circular and also the triangle we can say actually it is a very old invented uh, in 1972 itself after that it has slowly has become popular right from 19 uh, when we collect the research papers actually we have to start from the munson paper 1972 right everything is available in indian institute of science bangalore so when we talk about the biomedical applications right the wearable electronics is coming to the part uh, it may be in communication or security uh, or it may be in entertainment games or education or healthcare all are coming under this microstrip patch antennas embedded in the material and we can say it is a wearable material application may be biomedical application so generally a uh, typical uh, type of microstrip patch antenna it is uh, shown in the top right this is the uh, microstrip patch antenna uh, right and this is a supply connector uh, this is a low noise amplifier is embedded in it the power divider we have and the uh, how it is connected to the collimating lens so it is a sample application so when for the biomedical applications we have to see the on body antennas so for on body antennas it has to be embedded on the material or the dress materials and this is to be insensitive to the body proximity right the temperature changes on the body have radiation pattern right this will reduce the uh, link loss so these are the types of uh, geometry we can use for on body antennas it's a simple microstrip patch antenna is a rectangle one right a rectangle in this is an inset feed so these are the on body antennas this is the transient radio analysis when it is embedded on the dress material right it's a sample only i'm showing it we will see how we will design the antennas so when a material is a textile material has to be selected and the antenna is to be embedded on the material and all the transmitter will be available receiver will be available and this this can be tested with the help of the network analyzer how it is working then the transient radio analysis can be done with the help of this on body antennas so these are all the basic microstrip patches rectangular elliptical triangular uh, it's a dipole material circular ring so these method these antennas can be designed with the help of the transmission line methods or cavity analysis method or start from the maxwell's equation so maxwell's equation that we have come across from uh, the electromagnetic fields itself so the maxwell is a very famous equation um so we have four equations i think would know be del cross e right the equation uh, in terms of uh, you have a magnetic field electric field and magnetic field 
generally would say about these the maxwell's equation as electric continuous time changing electric field will create the magnetic field and time changing magnetic field will in turn create the electric field that is why electric and magnetic field are um, continuously propagating in the space one field will create the another field electric will create the magnetic field magnetic field will create the electric field you have come across the maxwell's equation del cross e is minus dou b by dou t that is with the space a space equation and uh, representation in terms of the displacement and the time is linked in the maxwell's equation he has proved that the wave is moving generally all the concept can be analyzed with the help of the uh, empirical analysis and the uh, practical measurement that we can make so empirical this is nothing but uh, theoretical analysis and the practical uh, a design we can make so if we design even the marconi has design an antenna at the starting he has he has to prove that uh, in terms of the empirical formula the signal is transmitted so he has to, he has proved that the signal which is generated in one side has to be transmitted through the atmosphere and is reflected back and it is received at the other end he has to prove it empirically how this can be done that is with, that is why uh, the maxwell's equation has came into the picture so when uh, we can say that practically we can prove that the signal is transmitted may be received on the other side how we can prove it empirically so the time changing field right will produce a displacement right at one particular second the signal at one point right after a moment the signal is moving to the another point so there is a displacement from point number 1 to the point number 2 and also this time changing in the next second only so t is equal to 0 second the signal at one point and t is equal to 1 second the signal is moved to the another point so the time is changing and also displacement is changing that is the basic of the maxwell's equation both are related del cross e is a displacement and time is nothing but dou by dou t is the time so when we see about the maxwell's equation left side is uh, uh, what i can say that left side is a displacement and Uh, right side is uh, time so uh, i think i wish to show you uh, yeah so this is what uh, del cross e is equal to minus dou b by dou t this del cross e is nothing but the displacement curl operator is leading to time changing operator right when one side of the equation is electric field other side would be magnetic field when the other side is magnetic field right side will be left hand side is magnetic field right side will be the electric field so electric field will create the magnetic field in turn magnetic field will create the electric field there is nothing but continuously it is happening right so one side is displacement another side is time so here the time and displacement is the relation between the two right this is the heart of the maxwell's equation right generally all the analysis has started with uh, the maxwell's equation only so this is nothing but a patch antenna it is a very popular antenna all the antenna people right start from the scratch they will uh start from the patch antenna because the laptop antennas now all the hotspot antennas mobile antennas everything is a microstrip patch antenna only it has its own advantages and also the disadvantages there even though uh this patch antenna has its own disadvantages advantages is more so it is a metal patch suspended over at the ground plane it's a simple air filled insulated space patch antenna right is so from the ground air is filled that is why it is an air filled insulated a patch antenna consists mainly of a square conductor mounted over the ground plane the dimensions are uh, roughly half wavelength it is lambda by 2 wavelength excuse me okay. 
the insulating space between the two planes may be air. Here, that is the example it is shown. So this is the basic uh, construction. We can understand base is the ground and the gray color is the dielectric material over that surface. It is a microstrip patch antenna. It is printed. So generally the patch antenna is a conducting material of particular length and width. There is a formula to calculate the length and width of the antenna. And with the help of the particular feeding method, we can join the feed line like this. And the height of the dielectric material is a small h and its dielectric permittivity is epsilon r. And the very important parameters for the design is selection of the dielectric material and its own permittivity. Excuse me. Yeah. So the design consists of length, width, and the selection of the dielectric material and the height of the dielectric material. So the very important thing, the design is the selection of dielectric material and its height. In the market, it is readily available the dielect different types of dielectric material and its own uh, thickness. <clears throat> the length and width of the microstrip patch antenna has to be calculated. So the base is the frequency or the wavelength. So from that only we have to start the antenna design. Because the application is different, the wavelength and frequency will be different, hence the wavelength will be different. Generally, when it is loaded with the dielectric as a substrate, the length of the antenna decreases as the dielectric constant increases. But we cannot, beyond the level, we cannot increase the substrate. It has its own fringing effects. This is an array of circular patch antenna. It's a two-dimensional physical geometry. Its shape may be of a basic is a square, circular, rectangular, elliptical like that. This is a, is a circular type of conventional antenna embedded on the dielectric material, which is a two-dimensional array. So this is an application for the UHF ultra high frequency range. The size of the antenna tied with a wavelength because of the resonant frequency. So generally, why we have to prefer a microstrip patch antenna, right? So it can be a low profile antenna, conformal, any shape we can uh, fabricate, right? It may be in bent, can be embedded on a textile material or hard material, hard dielectric surface, right? So it is a very low profile antenna. And fabrication is uh, easy to fabricate even as a lab a mini project, we can fabricate the antenna in your own place itself without any additional uh, purchase of the equipment, we can fabricate. It's very easy for fabrication at the cost of even 1000 rupees. You can etch the antenna with the help of the photolithography process in the laboratory itself. And the feeding method is also very easy because coaxial cable, it can be suited or we can go for the micro strip line. But you can fabricate that feeding itself. Micro strip line also, we can merge with the antenna design. And very easy to fabricate an array also. And it can be incorporated with other micro strip circuit elements. You can easily uh, incorporate with other circuit elements. And the pattern is hemispherical because we are considering over the ground plane. So uh, the antenna is exposed over the surface, hence the radiation pattern is hemispherical because we would not encourage the radiation pattern below the ground surface, right? Always there below the ground surface, radiation is possible, but we will stop with the help of the ground plane. We can have 
radiation above the surface of the adreno. Directivity is general, it is moderate, 6 to 8 dBs, and the minimum 6 dB we can achieve for a simple microstrip patch adreno of rectangular in shape. If the shape is properly tuned, we can go for uh, a moderate 8 dB directivity, and also we can achieve the gain. So the textile uh, materials can be used as a substrate material. So without uh, directly going to the textile antenna, some more points we can discuss with the help of these uh, uh, micro patch antennas. Yes. So for geometry of the rectangular patch, I want to discuss with you because when uh, any person start with the uh, antenna design, uh, this is uh, more useful. So L is the resonant uh, length dimension, width of the antenna is we can assume that it is W, it is usually larger than the length, right? So the W is less than two times that of L or 1.5 times that of L, it is possible. And the feeding, right? If this is the dielectric surface, from the ground plane, the antenna can be fed with the help of the coaxial feed at any particular point. So the point of uh, the feed has to be selected with the help of the formula. By substituting the length and width, thickness, everything, we have to calculate at which particular point the feeding has to be given. Right? So when the point is selected, we can feed the coaxial cable. The coaxial cable is also very, very cheap. We can purchase even 50 to 100 rupees. Uh, the uh, the connector points. So the coaxial connector, then we can connect the coaxial cable. So simple coaxial feeding, the resistance, we can calculate with the help of the position at which particular point the antenna has to be supplied with the help of the supply voltage. But the difficult point is also the same, obtaining uh, the proper impedance matching for thicker substrate because the probe it has its own inductance. So the selection of the feed point is more uh, typical. Otherwise, it will create a probe radiation problem that is also has its own disadvantages. Right? Um, this is a, produces a, a spurious uh, radiation from the patch antenna and it has its own surface wave excitation also. There's a micro strip line feed called the inset feed. The uh, conducting line has the extended at the tip. So we can connect the connector at the end point. Instead of the coaxial feed, micro strip line feed also we can do. And another one is the probe fed. That is also easy to fabricate you can obtain the match by controlling its position. It requires a hole, wire hole. In the design itself, even the CST or ADS or any antenna design software you have, you can design the hole and we can select a position. It is an aperture coupled type of feeding method. It has its own broader bandwidth, but it is somewhat compared to the other techniques, its fabrication. Uh, needs a good idea about the feeding method. It has a spurious emissions as possible. This is called the inset feed. The antenna, uh, this same copper is extended outside for the inset feed. This allows for the planar feeding. There's more advantages one actually. Yeah, very easy to obtain the input matching. We know that for all antenna, you have its characteristic inference, right? The characteristic inference role is very, very important for the communication point. The whole world lie in the characteristic inference. If the cable inference is not proper, right, the signal cannot be derived. And if the antenna inference is not the uh, uh, equal to the cable inference, whatever the power supply you can give a uh, good antenna design, uh, the signal will not be fed into the antenna, right? 
So here the calculation is the length and width of the inset feed line. At this point, the antenna impedance has to be properly matched. Then only the current can be excited with the help of the inset feed. So it has a significant radiation because of its thickness. The substrate, the thickness, major role. Then there's a proximity coupling by uh, giving a microstrip line at the middle, right? It's suitable for the planar feeding, but less line radiation compared to the microstrip feed. This is good proximity, that is EMC coupling. So you can go for the multilayer fabrication. This would be suitable. Again, the matching is very important problem. Gap coupling is also another method of feeding. Suitable for the microwave uh, full wave designs. This is also aperture coupled patch used for the planar feeding. This is also used for the multi layer fabrication. Equivalent circuits how to design an, a different type of coupling because the antenna is as its own equivalent circuit and also. Uh, the feed is also having an equivalent circuit. So all are lying in the resistance, inductance, capacitance and conductance. We can convert our material into an equivalent circuit or find an equivalent circuit then convert into a planar structure. So a probe has its own feed loss, efficiency and all. We will go into a particular design of a rectangular antenna so the cavity analysis method resonant cavity analysis method is used to design an antenna we will start from the resonant frequency uh, how it is uh, created and how we can select the particular um, uh, frequency with the help of the length and width so first of all, we have to say the rule of thumb for the calculations. A microstrip uh, antenna, what are all the design equations for efficient radiation? What should be its length and width for the particular selected frequency, right? So this is the base for an antenna design, right? For the participant, you please uh, just, um, you can see the equations I think surely you will understand. For efficient radiation, width of the antenna W is nothing but the velocity, free space velocity V0 divided by two times that of the resonant frequency F or root of two divided by epsilon R plus one. See this equation, what are all the parameters? Width, width is equal to, that is depends on the resonant frequency, then dielectric permittivity of the material, right? You know the structure of the antenna, ground plane, over that the dielectric surface, right? Just I'll show it to you. Uh, ground plane, dielectric material, over that the conducting patch. This is the construction of the rect simple rectangular patch. We are going to calculate what is its width and what is its length, right? And what should be the uh, height and what should be the dielectric permittivity, right? So the selection depends on the dielectric material. Dielectric material selection depends on the frequency which we are going to use. So as a first point, what we have to say about the frequency based on the application. What is the application that we are selecting based on that only dielectric permittivity has to be selected. Okay. So we know the dielectric permittivity and we know what is the frequency of selection. So based on that, only the width can be calculated. So what is the width? Width you see, free space velocity, three into 10 power eight divided by two times that of the resonant frequency, root of two divided by epsilon r plus one. Okay, good. W can be calculated easily with the help of simple calculator. Then what should be the length? Length is nothing but, right? So one divided by two into F or root of, epsilon effective epsilon effective has its own formula with the help of epsilon r1 the last formula you see 
epsilon or effective and this is c or c divided by we can say that c divided by 2 into f or root of epsilon effective or instead of c we can say that 1 divided by root of mu not epsilon not 1 by root of mu not epsilon not is nothing but free space velocity c 3 into 10 power 8 so the difference is from the length and width you see only the difference is this is again c divided by or v not divided by this one but here directly uses epsilon or permittivity but this one uses a epsilon or effective permittivity so effective permittivity has to be calculated from this uh, epsilon or effective is equal to epsilon or plus 1 divided by 2 plus epsilon or minus 1 divided by 2 within bracket 1 plus 12 h divided by w the whole power minus 1 by 2 that is in the denominator it is root or 1 plus 12 h divided by w what is h height of the dielectric material w is the width of the antenna right first the width is calculated after calculating the width we can calculate epsilon or effective okay minus see this formula now the l depends on this term minus 2 times that of del l del l is the fringing length because of the radiation there will be change in the antenna length not the physical length the effective length would be changes right in the antenna concept you have come across the effective height of the antenna isn't it physical height and effective height is different similarly here the physical length and the effective length is different all the length physical length cannot be utilized as an effective length may changes slight variation would happen so that due to the fringing field outside from the top surface to the dielectric material so this uh, del l it has its own formula again it deals about epsilon or effective then w h all those things now this would be the del l now after calculating del l we can substitute in the capital l so with the calculated length calculated uh, with the help of the del l epsilon or with the help of epsilon or effective only l we can calculate this is the simple design equation of micro strip antenna anybody you can start with this calculation bandwidth is directly proportional to the width right so after calculating the width only we can talk about the bandwidth right a simple selection as shown here a sample calculation and the inset uh, that point at which particular point the antenna has to be fed that should be calculated with the help of the impedance only uh, this is an efficiency radiation efficiency total uh, Uh, radiated efficiency by total efficiency is nothing but the radiation efficiency a different types of material for the foam substrate and uh, generally available in the market is uh, derived material that is epsilon or 2.2 or the in terms of a 2 to 4 range we can get from the market the substrate materials the thicker would be the substrate it will be better for the dielectric losses so this is the radiation pattern uh, for particular uh, uh, epsilon or value the radiation efficiency is maximum when this ratio h divided by lambda not is approximated to 0.02 right and this will be the radiation pattern just i'm showing you how the radiation pattern will look like a micro strip antenna has a radiation pattern like this e plane Uh, we can draw the radiation pattern with the help of the matlab even with the help of the matlab also you can write the matlab program and we can uh, construct the e plane radiation pattern and h plane radiation pattern it will look like this one how this uh, graph has attained that is nothing but with the help of this equation electric field when the far field radiation pattern if you apply in the loop of hemispherical uh, the value of theta this r theta side chain would have come across 
uh, theta is the elevation angle, psi is the azimuth angle. If we substitute theta as 0 to 180 degree and psi is uh, from 0 to 360 degree, we'll be getting uh, in the for loop, in the MATLAB for loop, we can construct and you can write an e this equation in the MATLAB and you vary the theta and the psi value or is the radiation from the origin point to the point of uh, antenna position is kept as an R. Width you can substitute, length you can substitute. If you implement this function, a simple function in even in the MATLAB, you can get the radiation pattern of E plane pattern like this. These are all the uh, the, uh, the computer aided formulas you can use. So, oh, what is the problem in the microstrip passage? Now, compared to the advantages, very uh, less the disadvantage only that we can overcome with the help of uh, the variations that we can make in the microstrip patch antennas. Generally, it is a low bandwidth. That is why we are doing many things to increase the bandwidth, creating a slot over the antenna, U slot or a F shape of antenna to increase uh, the bandwidth because the microstrip antenna has a narrow bandwidth. So in order to improve the bandwidth, we can do many changes in the uh, structure of the microstrip patch antenna and also the selection of the dielectric material. But the efficiency is also less. It is limited by the conductor and the dielectric losses, it is sure. And by the surface wave also, because uh, these are the uh, hemispherical radiation pattern. Uh, this is going to be held over the uh, surface of the antenna. So there will be a surface wave loss. It is severe when for the uh, thinner substrate. That is why the proper dielectric material has to be selected. For improving the bandwidth, you can go for the L-shaped probe or a top hat on the probe or selection of the, uh, you can improve the uh, bandwidth with the help of many types are available. Strip, a slot, a foam inverted patch, inverted F antenna, uh, that is for the uh, laptop antennas, we can use inverted plane or F, we can select, you can increase the bandwidth by 25%. And the slot is introduced in this point. We can have um, many number of layers which we can construct with the help of the stacked patches, low permittivity antenna, triple tuned resonance. We can use the probe fit. So this is a stacked patch with the help of uh, ACP fed minus 10 dB. The S11 bandwidth is about 100 percentage. Is a S11 curve, return loss curve for uh, the measured and also the calculated, simulated and the measured results, O base. The bandwidth is actually increased with the help of this stacked patch. See, this curve is more important for antenna testing, right? So first, after, uh, for example, the frequency is selected, okay, length and width is calculated proper dielectric material with the help of the proper dielectric material and the height of the substrate is selected. So after calculating, we are fabricating it, connecting a connector over here. We have to test the antenna, whether the antenna is working, right? So conducting material, this is nothing but conducting material over that with a stacked patch antenna as spread. And it's a rectangle at the top surface is the metal rectangular antenna. This is a, a square. This one a shape is a square microstrip patch. Below that is a stacked patch with the foam. For uh, the testing, 
first we have to test the antenna with the help of the um, network analyzer. So the network analyzer will measure all the S parameters. So the S parameter can be measured for the antenna is S11. Antenna is a single port antenna. So S parameter will be only one. S11 will be the S parameter for the antenna. That can be measured. This is the curve that we are getting with the help of the network analyzer or maybe in the simulator. You feed the design the antenna in any software like CST or ADS, then uh, you will get an S11 plot like this. It's a return loss in decibels. So the antenna result would be like this. If you plot the x-axis, the frequency, y-axis is the return loss that is S11 in decibels. Right, 20 log of this S11 is nothing but the return loss. It would be like this. So what is the meaning of this curve? What is its statement? Without the stack repatch, a simple antenna will have only one depth point like this. So have only one depth point like this. Here, this one has stacked patch. That is why you have two depths. So uh, what is its purpose? Is because the uh, Idea is to increase the bandwidth. Here the bandwidth is increased. How can I say that the bandwidth is increased? See, 0, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, like that it goes on. When the antenna would be good, the return loss is less than minus 10 dB. Then only the antenna is operating in the specified frequency ranges. Minus 10 dB or at least minus 14 dB level. So minus 14 dB level, if you draw a line in this point, minus 14 dB, you see these frequencies starting from this up to this point, right, we will be getting below minus 10 dB, right, or 14 dB, minus 14 dB, this line, right. So when it is minus 14 dB, less than minus 14 dB, the antenna is working, meaning is 95 percentage of the transmission is possible only 5 percentage is reflected back that is what the meaning of below minus 14 db minus 30 db 35 db 36 db and all is 99.999 percentage it is transmitted only very few reflection is happening right if you achieve minus 14 db level right that would be better so here the bandwidth you see, when you extend the line to this uh, x-axis, it would be uh, even uh, this point. So 5.2, 5.2 gigahertz to uh, 9, approximately 9 gigahertz is the bandwidth of this antenna, right? This stacked patch antenna has its bandwidth as 5.2 gigahertz to 9 gigahertz, very wide bandwidth. If suppose this curve is not there, right? So, or this area not is there, not for the stacked patch. When this is a simple rectangular patch, what will happen is draw a 14 dB line from this point, extend below 5.22, to, uh, below 5.8 would be the bandwidth of the microstrip patch, right? So if you do any modification in the structure to improve the bandwidth, then only the bandwidth can be improved. Otherwise, microstrip patch antenna is a low bandwidth antenna, right? So we can increase the bandwidth by doing some modifications in the microstrip antenna. Okay. And this, uh, we can uh, talk about the uh, Smith chart also. So uh, when you draw uh, the Smith chart, the, point, the center point has to be reached. The center point is a match point of uh, the Smith chart. That is S is equal to uh, 1 actually. So even you have a 0 reflection. Reflection coefficient is 0. Uh, 1 plus KB, 1 minus K is nothing but S. So when the K is equal to 0, S would be equal to 1. When there is no reflection, uh, standing wave ratio is 1. Right, standing wave ratio variation is from starting from 1 to infinite. So minimum standing wave ratio is 1 for reflection coefficient 0. When you draw the curve for S11 for the, uh, the Smith chart, if you draw it, uh, the 
uh, impedance matching, you can test for the different frequencies. What would be the standing wave ratio that we can check? There are so many uh, factors we can go for improving the bandwidth for the parasitic uh, uh, patches. We can uh, go for different type of edge coupled, all those things to achieve the bandwidth. We can increase the bandwidth by making a slot over here. When you make a uh, slot, the slot will work in the another frequency band. So the combination of the metal strip and the uh, slot will operate in the significant change in the bandwidth, right? 10 to 40 percentage of the bandwidth is increased because of the double resonance effect. All are the paper results only. We can make double U slot or E patch, F patch. So a uh, number of materials are there to increase the bandwidth. So these are all the uh, antenna structures, E band, that is multi band antennas. The shape you see, if you prefer a different shape of the microstrip patches, each and every area will work for the different bands. For low band, high band, right? it will cover the combination of these bands would result at the different band frequencies. So combination of the different band would result in the wide bandwidth. So now the narrow bandwidth problem of microstrip antenna can be eliminated with the help of the different structures the shapes. But to cover the very high frequency ranges, you have to go for an array of antenna, not the multi band antenna. These structures would address a problem of uh, increasing of the bandwidth with the help of the single antenna only. The single antenna will work for multiple band of frequencies. Miniaturization is also possible. A hypermittivity, quarter wavelength patch, that is lambda by 4. Planar inverted F antennas, FIFA antennas are also very famous for the design. Capacitive loading effects can be created. We can go for the slots and meandering effects. So I'll show you what is its a miniaturization. The size can be reduced by increasing the dielectric uh, permittivity. So epsilon r is equal to 1 and this is epsilon r is equal to 4. Size would be reduced like uh, w is changed to the w by 2, l is changed to w, l, l divided by 2. Right? Half of the shape is reduced. Quarter wave patch, small quarter wave patch. Excuse me. This planar inverted F for miniaturization. This capacitive loading, planar inverted F antenna. Excuse me for a minute.
the slotted patches this is called the meandering effects so for example you have come across rfid antennas these rfid antennas will use the meandering structures there is a meandered square wave patch antennas meandered pipha antennas there is a side view and top view of radiation radiation is improved with the help of the surface wave excitation is rsw antennas these are all the meandered antennas this is the projects works of uh, the pg students meandered structures is so simple the formula calculation only we can implement uh, the theoretical calculation with the help of simple uh, any uh, software language then the calculation can be done over the csd or any software antenna design software then you can implement in the software and we can create the return loss curve you analyze it then we can fabricate the simple uh, as a mini project and we can see the radiation pattern uh, we can fabricate and test the return loss curve and the radiation pattern we have to go for the anechoic chamber this is the meandered antenna see the uh, rfid structures even these antennas uh, can be implemented for the um, rf tags rfid tags you know for the car uh, number plate and for the uh, toll gate payment these uh, type of meandered structures will be suitable the broadband uh, shorted patch antennas so different types of antennas i'm showing it to you any type of antenna we can select and we can work for the micro strip patch array antennas when we work a simple antenna then we can go for the array of antennas this is the array of antennas series fed or parallel fed corporate fed right this is a series fed one antenna fill fed the another so continuously it is fed but this one is a corporate fed all its own advantages and disadvantages this is the array parallel array power divider to feed the power the one dimensional array this is the parallel feed of two dimensional array this is an example of the millimeter wave antenna see now can you understand why i am saying a single antenna design is also important so in this antenna array 16 by 16 elements single antenna is a micro strip patch antenna it has its own feeding type right when the single antenna is designed right we can just copy and paste the remaining antennas and the another problem is feeding feeding point c the feeding is four antennas are grouped micro strip fed is done nearby next four antennas micro strip fed is done right now you take these four antennas these four antennas and the lower one next lower four antennas all are connected with the help of another feed right it is a feeding line will supply these feed inset feed similarly it will go extend to the center point you see from the center point the lengthier feed will select into the four then four again split into four like that it goes on this is nothing but a parallel fed antenna it's an example of a two dimensional array when the antenna is a two dimensional array this would be concentrating the power only in a particular direction single antenna has its radiation pattern as a broad right array of antenna the radiation pattern is sharper one right when the radiation pattern is sharper you can track the signal to any point broad radiation pattern distance a single antenna will cover the 60 degree half power beam width but for the present day applications for long distance unnecessarily we have to uh, transmit the power in other direction we have to transmit the power only in the particular degrees if we know where is the receiver 
we should not waste the power by sending the signal in all remaining directions that is why uh, the gain has improved half hour beam width is reduced hence the directivity would be increased right this is a, uh, a scanning array a number of antennas are connected the back side of the feed point is shown power divider is also the design like micro strip structures we have to design a power divider for the supply phase shifters to connect the uh, excitation and also the phase magnitude and the phase excitation properly fed it to the antenna then only it would be a scanning array to transmit and receive the signal in a particular direction is a reflect array feed point high gain but it is low bandwidth the small in size the dimension is shown with the help of the scale long scale telemetry antennas see it is a planar structure it is shown in this and one this how many number of elements you have eight elements are arranged as a series fed right and here it is a corporate fed seriously arranged but it is fed with the uh, corporate fed and it is conformal about the cylinder for telemetry applications return loss you see minus 45 db at least uh, reaching to minus 40 db and mine below minus 10 db sorting from this point in the range of all the biomedical applications ism band of 2.45 but here it is working from 2.18 uh, or 2.2 to 2.3 it is working the lens coupled printed antennas we'll go for textile now we have something we discussed about the antennas what are all the feeding methods what would be the return loss when for the biomedical applications the antenna would be the substrate material should be a textile materials the fabric should be wearable durable and it should be flexible so the proper direct textile material has to be selected with a known dielectric constant you can ask a question that how the dielectric constant can be measured there are numerous methods are available even in the physics laboratory to measure the dielectric constant value even for any material make a powder a type of material and uh, in, uh, insert into the rectangular wave structures excuse me for a moment Excuse me, ma'am. Ina, ma'am. I have muted you, ma'am. 
excuse me ma'am neena ma'am yes sir ah ma'am uh, you <laughs> since your phone conversations were uh, okay. audible to us i have okay. muted you ma'am that's why okay ma'am thank you so the textile materials can be used as a thread material as nothing but a part of cloth so what actually discussing about is how to calculate the dielectric uh, loss calculations dielectric material selection we can uh, select any dielectric material and there are many numerous methods are available to in even in iits and iit kanpur iit chennai Uh, and also in the laboratory uh, we can do on the microwave bench itself to measure the dielectric constant whatever the material that we have chosen uh, we can calculate the dielectric uh, constant epsilon or or the known materials uh, the dielectric constant known materials are there in the market that we can purchase as a substrate material for textile which will reduce the surface surface wave losses and improve the impedance bandwidth of the antenna so the what are all the factors which will affect the textile antennas is main the permittivity and also the loss tangent del parameter uh, the dielectric property depends uh, this depends on the frequency temperature and the surface roughness moisture content in the material and the purity of the material right this depends on these uh, factors so what are all the design issues the calculation of the uh, uh, dielectric uh, material uh, value and the selection of the height even uh, textile material have its own 0.8 mm to 0.6 mm thickness be uh, suitable for uh, dielectric material and by first we have to select these materials then uh, what are all the antenna parameters is must to calculate is a return loss vsw or standing wave ratio impedance gain directivity bandwidth and the quality factor so generally these uh, textile antennas would be suitable for uh, uh, medical health care and then also the sports uh, witness monitoring purpose military and also the security so first we have selected as a title of the selection is only for the biomedical applications so we can see the medical health care how these antennas would be used for the medical health care for that how to fabricate these uh, and what are all the challenges when we design the textile antennas and material selection so regarding these uh, uh, for the next half an hour we will see how the uh, textile antenna would be suitable for biomedical application next we will go to the um, uh, what or the uh, uh, measurements part we can discuss and the textile antenna um, textile antenna structure uh, it has one high directivity ease of construction you have the types is partial textile uh, patch or maybe in fully uh, fully textile patch antenna so difference between partial and fully is a partial textile patch is nothing but uh, the textile high dielectric material is a textile material Uh, but the conductor and the ground plane is the conducting material like copper uh, copper ribbon tape we can purchase we can use it as the conductor and the ground plane that is partial textile patch and now fully textile patch and has all the material we can go for the textile even the conducting material itself it is a textile material we can select as a simple micro strip patch we know it this also the um, uh, main formula that you already know it so the width of the patch effective dielectric constant length we have discussed dielectric is the fringing length that will be the effective length uh, is its feeding <coughs> characteristic impedance calculations uh, 50 ohm micro strip patch and a transmission line uh, uh, can be ca calculated with the help of this zt formula so all the design equations we already know it the ground dimensions right these uh, slides and all i'll share it to you so uh, regarding uh, for example this is the work of uh, the the phd um, 
the various micro strip patch textile materials has its own uh, uh, dielectric material selection different textile materials with uh, the dimension in the minimum that is in the millimeter uh, dimension it is written for example a denim cloth the textile material is a denim material we have calculated with using these formulas and all calculated the width the length inset feed everything feed length feed width ground plane ground length everything so for the different material we have calculated so the different textile materials are the denim maybe cotton flannel materials all are available uh, in online poly cotton twill weave polyester materials is calculated now how we have to select the textile what are all the criteria that is based permittivity loss tangent dielectric textile thickness humidity content available in the clothing and the surface resistivity then ramp mechanical deformations for conductive on the textile dielectric textiles so how the uh, dielectric material selection is possible with the help so in the internet itself it is readily available for the different textile materials what's its permittivity for uh, you can see and from that any one we can select for example denim textile material these are all the properties the types of textile material is given epsilon r value for example denim textile material permittivity is 1.6 if we purchase that it's a denim material the dielectric permittivity we can use it as 1.6 for the thickness of h is 0.15 mm so a material a clothing material 1.6 dielectric permittivity then 0.15 thickness and the loss tangent is standard is 0.01 similarly different material what is its permittivity what is its thickness you can purchase any material and we can use this data and the conductive material selection so conductive material selection is for the uh, micro strip patch right this is for the dielectric the micro strip patch is conductive textile material is nickel copper ripstop fabric now the conducting material itself it is a fabric it is a copper then shield it super it's also an another conducting material and the pure copper polyester taffeta fabric is also a conductive textile material is a conductive non textile material is simple copper sheet we can use or copper foil tape is readily available in even in online you can purchase copper foil tape with conductive adhesive because you have to paste it on this textile material you know ground plane dielectric and over that a conducting surface if it is a non textile material you have to paste that uh, material copper sheet over the textile so you need an conductive adhesive to paste on the clothing material so you can use the copper sheet you can stitch it or you can paste it so there are two types of conducting material conductive textile and conductive non textile material so for these materials and all uh, there is nothing but the surface resistivity can dif different types of conducting materials Uh, conductive non textile materials all are the different materials has its uh, data sheet conductivity conductive element what is the conductive element what is its thickness weight and all then with shielding uh, suitable for which one all those things is readily available so what are all the uh, study Excuse me, ma'am. Mina, ma'am. We couldn't hear you, ma'am.
dear participants kindly bear with the connectivity issue our guest speaker will join us back shortly Hello, I may order. Hello. Sir? Yes, ma'am. You I'm can ah, restart the uh, screen. Share ah. uh, screen, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for the disturbance. There is a connection has uh, dropped. Yeah, ma'am. We could. So these are the different types of uh, conducting materials we can select, and these are all the data sheet available in even in the internet, and we can collect it. So the surface resistivity, conductivity, because these uh, data and all is required to for the calculation of antenna structures design, whether it may be in textile material or non-textile uh, material suitable for all biomedical applications. So for the textile antenna, the, what are the main factors that would affect it? Human body interface with the antenna performance, bending of an antenna, antenna return loss, radiation pattern, divergence, specific absorption rate, SAR modeling, then uh, water absorption. So regarding the human body interface to the antenna performance is, uh, when we connect the textile antenna in the jacket of a man, so the human body interface will be a major problem. That is also we have to analyze. And bending of an antenna. 
based on the location of the antenna fixed on the shirt so the bending would happen so even in the testing that we have to test the all the s parameters the radiation pattern and all by including the bending also the general trend loss would affect sure radiation pattern of the antenna is also the necessary basic study divergence is another parameter specific absorption rate that we have to model that we can do with the help of any software analysis water absorption rate is also a very must so uh, what are all the uh, analysis a sample analysis i'll show it to you then you will move to the measurement part a sample is the denim material as taken substrate material is the denim conductive material may be of any type is compared copper sheet is selected these are all the conducting materials available uh, first two is in non textile the last three is a textile material the frequency for all uh, are the ism is taken example uh, medical band uh, so the frequency is the operating frequency and you see the voltage standing wave ratio all are nearing to 1 surely the standing wave ratio should be near to 1 it should be lower than 2 and the return loss should be greater than minus 14 db yes this is minus 14 db exactly and this is minus 28 minus 29 20 minus 16 all are greater than minus 14 then the inference is all are nearing 50 so different materials different frequency but the frequency range is selected as a 2.45 actually but all are not working for exactly 2.45 this frequency is mentioned as what is the dip it is shown in the return loss measurement that is what is returned and the standing wave ratio is generally it is 1 to infinite which is suitable closer to the one which is very good it should be less than 2 and the return loss is all are uh, less than uh, Minus of fourteen dB only, so minus twenty eight, twenty nine, like that goes. And impedance is approaching. It is all or the characteristic impedance fifty. Loss to one is not suitable, so thirty six point seven. So what are all the material which is best suitable is colored. So safety material is best suited because it is uh, range is compared to the copper sheet. This would be better. And for the textile material, the NCRSF is suited. because it closer the frequency range is also closer and the return loss is good so based on the analysis that we are making right uh, like this we can select any textile material and conductive material 
then calculate all those things this can be done with the help of formula and also we can go for the measurement so for the antenna part we have to do the calculation measurement this both has to be matched perfectly then only the design is okay analysis can be based on by Uh, seeing the results of whether the frequency dip is available in the particular range of frequency, standing wave ratio is suitable, return loss is suitable. Analyze different materials or select only one substrate material, one conducting material. Then uh, you apply it and change the shape of the uh, antenna, and we can test the same frequency, VSW, return loss, everything. for the same material right anything can be done this analysis actually made to select which textile materials would be suitable for biomedical applications the the result of the uh, work is shown here it cannot be done directly by selecting any one of the material we have to select the material and analyze the results of the material which is selected then only we can use that for uh, radiation pattern testing because the radiation pattern testing is costly starting from 5000 it is very so the textile and now fabrication is very cheap but the analysis that we are making testing is little bit costly return loss we can uh, measure in a, with the help of any network analyzer for this frequency range it is medical band so it is 2.45 gigahertz we can use a below 4 gigahertz network analyzer for the measurement but for the millimeter wave antennas and all above 18 gigahertz network analyzer we need to measure as an analysis of any uh, biomedical application antenna i have shown shown to you different types of uh, antennas are available cotton textile we can compare the results with the, by analyzing it which would be suitable for which application that's all now i want to discuss about um, the measurement spot because uh, the title coined is uh, antenna design and also rf uh, measurements for biomedical applications Uh, some basic concept i like to mention for the next uh, part <clears throat> the power definitions so what are all the basic needed for the rf measurements generally we would say that uh, the power measurements is with the help of the dbm so dbm is decibel per milliwatt 1 milliwatt that is what 10 logarithm of the power which is received with respect to the 1 milliwatt of power transmitted you see all the applications the tower uh, applications and all uh, all the power level represented with the help of the dbm only so the transmitted power would be considered as a 1 milliwatt 1 milliwatt is 0 dbm transmitted right if you transmit in 100 milliwatts this would be 20 dbm just we can substitute in this formula we will get it if it is 1 watt transmitted it is 30 dbm right so generally example is see here it is minus 110 dbm this much of power it is the minus 110 dbm is nothing but 0.401 nanowatts why especially minus 110 dbm is given as the mobile power is minus 110 dbm Uh, ranging from minus 110 dbm 120 even minus 120 dbm can be received with their mobile phone so for the 50 ohm load you have a minus 120 110 dbm right that is 0.7 micro volt we can say right so this is the power level required so for all the uh, power in the antennas we will refer only dbm not the decibels is a very important concept about this dbm is uh, the dbm and the watts we will represent with the help of the 1 milliwatt of power when it is 25 milliwatt of power is there with the help of uh, with the help of uh, 1 milliwatt transmitted is 14 dbm is the power level 
it is a standard see what is the uh, typical value which is selected generally you see 4 dbm is 2.5 milliwatt so uh, the power level is decided for the different applications bluetooth standard class 2 radio the maximum signal power for the wireless network and is minus 10 dbm and all for all the wireless signal over the network it is minus 70 dbm and for the gps satellite it is minus 125 27.5 dbm it is a femtowatts the power is a femtowatts of power because we cannot uh, simply increase the power level so the wireless lan we can increase to the 100 milliwatts to 7200 milliwatts we can increase but for the gps applications and all we can go for only femtowatts minus 0.178 femtowatts we know the electromagnetic spectrum ranges from lower to the higher range of frequencies extreme high frequencies and uh, this is uh, the frequency versus time domain analysis so as an electronics engineer and rf engineer we should know that uh, what is the time domain measurements and what is the frequency domain measurements generally for the lower uh, labs lower semester labs we would use a cro for all the measurements uh, for the uh, voltage measurements and even the frequency measurement you will use with the help of the oscilloscope but for the high frequency ranges we will not go for the oscilloscope measurements we would go for a spectrum analyzer measurement what is the difference between the time domain measurements and the spectrum analyzer measurements time domain measurements is you have a single signal as taken showing a signal like this we can uh, how would you measure um, uh, time in the oscilloscope uh, with the help of the time you will measure the frequency so x axis would be the time y axis will be the voltage in the time measurement we will measure the time and we will calculate 1 by t is the frequency uh, we can directly calculate the frequency from the time domain signal but for the frequency domain you see you can measure number of frequency component with the help of the spectrum analyzer this is what you are seeing it one signal second signal third signal so you have your own three frequency measurements is possible with the help of the spectrum analyzer we can directly measure the frequency here the x-axis is the frequency y-axis is the power for the spectrum analyzer but in the oscilloscope what is the difficulty you can see only one time signal but here you see many number of time signals in terms of the frequency you have three signals three frequencies right how many signals that is equal to how many frequencies you have three signals you have three frequency components you can see it for example where is the application after modulation you will be having many number of frequencies isn't it a single sinusoidal signal will have a single frequency component but after modulation you have many number of frequency component present in the signal for example in the amplitude modulation case in amplitude modulation case you have a message signal and you have a carrier signal after modulation you have a modulated signal would be present the modulated signal has its components of a carrier signal message signal uh, Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, the frequency measurements you see, you have a number of frequency components present in the modulated signal. So, in the modulated signal, mm, uh, modulated signal, you have a carrier frequency FC and fc plus fm fc minus fm lower sideband and upper sideband first sideband second means fc uh, plus 2 fm fc minus 2 fm then fc minus 3 fm fc plus 3 fm like that it goes on all the sidebands right so you have a, a left sideband and also you have a right sideband you have an upper sideband and lower sideband are in addition to the carrier signal so you have number of frequency component would be present for in our subjects what you would do is you will consider only the first sideband lower sideband and upper sideband only the remaining or these Fourier emissions it's happening from the circuit you will generally avoid it with the help of the filter you will remove all those why you are removing is 
the magnitude is very very less v square divided by r then that uh, power is uh, slowly reduced in the side bands right when you read about this communication theory paper uh, you understand about what are the amplitude of the side bands so goes on it is decreasing when it is coming from the left hand and the right side Uh, the power is reduced so um, maximum we will select the first lower side band and first upper side band only right lsb and usb so you have minimum three frequency component will be selected for after modulating a signal so now all the signals are modulated signals only so you cannot measure a modulated signal with a simple cro because it is showing only one time signal but actually we are using it for the modulation modulated signal testing yes but the students will say about that it is more distorted signal the signal is not coming and for example delta modulated signal it is very very difficult to see the delta modulated signal in the cro because cro is doing with the help of the super heterodyne receiver inbuilt inside will capture the signal at only one request rate and it will uh, pick the signal and it will show it on the screen if there are number of signals is present all are time fixed in the one time scale but the spectrum analyzer is tuning its own frequency it is producing its signal on the screen with multiple frequency components as a thin line in the y axis you have 10 frequency component as present 10 frequency component will be showing to you on the screen it is tuned in such a way that to produce all the frequency component on the screen right now can you understand the basic of the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer so oscilloscope will be suitable only for time domain measurement of a single signal it's quite okay but for the many number of frequency components you cannot see it on the oscilloscope you can see it only on the spectrum analyzer you need a spectrum analyzer to see multiple frequency components right so that is the use of the spectrum analyzer so why the spectrum analyzer um, coming to the picture in the antenna design antenna may be designed for a frequency but the antenna is working for some other frequency or it is working for the band of frequencies right we want to test the antenna right uh, the cro would not be suitable you are analyzing the frequency component so in the uh, um, laboratory experiments with the help of a cro we can see all the time domain signals but for the industry would go to the spectrum analyzer all the frequency analysis only you are making it what is the difference between the industry and the education system in industry uh, is talking in a different aspect education system is to design and test the frequency and you will test that whether the signal which is modulated or not yes it is modulated okay that is for the educational purpose but for the industry is there any other frequencies which is not used which is not a desirable component you have to omit it is there any other frequency component is also mixed with the original component that you have to detect and you have to remove it that is the industry aspect completely these two are different in the education system whether output is coming or not right in the industry is there any other output other than our own interest is coming which is disturbing to our system isn't it so that is the problem of the industry so you have to find what are all the fault available in the board for that you need the frequency analysis only in that sense frequency domain analysis will be most suitable for the industry not the time domain measurements this is a spectrum analysis generally we can connect any circuit if you have a spectrum analyzer in your laboratory uh, you please use that spectrum analyzer for all, all the experiments in addition to the cro measurement we can as a student to make measure with the help of the spectrum analyzer 
for example even an amplitude modulation or frequency modulation what are all the frequency components are present we can adjust the floor level noise floor level and you can use easily get uh, how to measure the spectrum analyzer measurements there is a very simple available in the youtube itself you have you can measure the complex signals demodulated signals amplitude versus the frequency measurements we can easily study see this marker is showing that uh, because nothing we are going to do with the help of these uh, screen and all everything is written on it uh, marker is marking which is the peak signal and what is its power level you see why i am showing this is one is all the measurements you see, see it in the dbm because the connector which is with respect to the 1 milliwatt only so it is showing it it is dbm and the frequency is also if you select a marker this will pick up a peak signal and it show it on the reference these are all the measurements and i want to uh, show it to you a uh, network analyzer these are all the signal analyzers because the time would not permit to discuss all let me show you is a signal analyzer yeah this is the network analyzer which would be creating an return loss measurement snitch chart measurement phase measurement vswr measurement everything that we can measure with the help of the network analyzer after the antenna design so what would be the closed loop is first we have to calculate the uh, length width of the antenna what is the type of feed inset feed or corporate feed or it may be in simple coaxial feed calculate for the particular frequency all the uh, parameters right simulate it you measure the return loss and all okay now fabricate is fabricate the antenna in the laboratory connect a connector then come to the network analyzer network analyzer will test whether your simulated return loss is obtained if the material is proper material what would be getting in the simulated result will be available for the measurement result also it is very same right only a small deviation may happen due to the material that you can test with the help of the network analyzer what is its return loss what is the standing wave ratio what is the phase measurement and all so yes one one we can measure standing wave ratio we can measure uh, then phase measurement we can measure with the help of the network analyzer so network analyzer is a device which is used to measure all the s parameters the two port network antenna is a single port network so that is why it is only s11 if it is a two port network we can measure s11 s12 2122 so any two port network can be measured with the help of the network analyzer in the micro range of frequencies maybe in filter power divider all these structures amplifiers phase shifters we can measure with the help of the network analyzer this one network analyzer operating up to 20 gigahertz it's a wide dynamic range fast measurement temperature stability is there so this is suitable for all r&d works operate up to 20 gigahertz this will operate with the help of the coaxial cable which is provided uh, the connector is provided multi port test test set is provided we can test with the help of the network analyzer so uh, what you can do is all the s parameters can be measured isolation loss insertion loss return loss we can measure with the help of the network analyzer but radiation pattern cannot be measured with the help of the network analyzer you need to have a anechoic chamber for radiation pattern measurement so the only the radiation pattern measurement cannot be done with the help of the network analyzer 
So as a part of the work, you can design, construct, simulate, fabricate, test the antenna with the help of the network analyzer. For the radiation pattern measurement, the directivity study, actual directivity of the material, you can select uh, any anechoic chamber, go for the measurement, the radiation pattern can be studied. And uh, a single antenna can be measured with the help of the network analyzer. But with the help of, excuse me, Uh, ma'am, you are now audible, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, because I, I was on another call, so that is why I muted. Okay. So, in addition to the network analyzer, as a signal analyzer also will measure the yes, uh, yes parameter and also the all the um, signals like uh, the spectrum measurement signals they can measure and also the filtering signals, EVM signals, error vector signals also we can measure with the help of CXA signal analyzer. So this would be suitable. Uh, generally, if we design an antenna, we will have a curiosity to find whether the antenna is transmitting the signal or not. So network analyzer will test whether the antenna is working or not. Right? When the antenna measurement in the network analyzer, return losses minus less than minus 14 dB antenna is proper. But the signal analyzer will check whether the antenna is transmitting our signal. For example, a textile antenna, biomedical antenna, or any antenna for biomedical application, we have fabricated, right? Simulated, fabricated antenna is working that is tested with the help of the network analyzer. Next part is whether my antenna is transmitting any biomedical signal or not. I want to test that. So that we can go for VXA or CXA signal analysis. For example, this signal analysis. So what this will do is, it will, you, you can create your own any signal, biomedical signal, for example, EEG signal. Any EEG signal, you can download a signal and we can feed it to the device and you can 
transmit that eeg signal with the help of your antenna you can transmit signal and you can receive the signal with the help of the same signal analyzer at the other end so you need a two signal analyzers one is for the transmission another one is for the reception right so one signal analyzer will transmit your biomedical signal another signal analyzer will receive the biomedical signal so by that sense you can understand what is transmitting its signal and it is receiving the signal now the problem will be okay that yes the antenna design is working for biomedical applications that we can understand then the radiation pattern there is no other go we have to go for this any me semi anechoic or fully anechoic chamber we have to go and measure the radiation pattern measurements for the laboratory also for some of the colleges may have its radiation pattern measurement but all are working for lower range of frequencies not for the higher range of frequencies in a psne college of engineering technology identical we have a signal analysis all the equipments i am showing to you all the microwave solutions these are all available here for the measurement uh, the testing uh, fabrication part is also available signal spectrum analyzers signal generators uh, then power meters and power sensors all the test accessories a fabrication uh, tool and the handheld network analyzer this one is a handheld any point we can take this handheld tool with the have it in hand then we can measure and come back so this will be suitable up to 14 gigahertz we have the facility we can measure all the types of antenna test and all under 14 gigahertz we don't have greater than 14 gigahertz so millimeter wave measurements cannot be done here up to 4 uh, 4g the measurements up to 14 gigahertz we can measure with the help of the network analyzer in hand so these signal analysis spectrum analyzers lcr meters we can go for the rf testing and measurements all cxa uh, this uh, exa would be suitable up to um, Uh, what uh, the 14 gigahertz measurement only we can make it so these uh, devices and all would be suitable for industry industry measurements also we are making it uh, we can connect through internet and also we can measure we can take uh, the signal so these higher end equipments are of measurements uh, each and every devices will work as a pc we can mail the signal download the signal we can copy it in a pen drive uh, we can transmit with the help of the network card available lan is available and we can connect uh, up to with the help of uh, the network connection we can connect uh, 10 equipments as a single hand and we can operate these devices from the mobile phone so in the mobile phone we can install a software and we can make an app for that uh, we can operate those devices in remote so from home i can operate or you can operate my device from your side you can operate you can control my front panel of the equipment and you can operate the equipment you can uh, take the output also that is also possible uh, that is the range of the rf measurements so because why these facilities available is generally uh, all designs would be better for the standard when it is tested for continuously 48 hours minimum so we cannot sit in front of the panel for the 48 hours continuously we can just on the equipments switch on the equipments connect to the internet with the ip address then we can close the lab we can operate with the help of the mobile phone all the equipment we can take measurements at any particular point if there is any burst of signal is appearing on the screen we can stop and measure whatever the thing you can do switch off on everything you can do with the help of the mobile phone that is the plus point of all the keysight equipments we have <coughs>
so i think um, very overview of the antenna design and uh, basic formulas uh, for the biomedical especially biomedical applications for the simple textile materials can be selected uh, and what are all the uh, materials available in the internet i have shown to you and what are all the antenna measurements that can be done with the help of the rf equipments i have discussed with you <coughs> uh 